When most people think of designing interfaces, they think of it as an art and not as a science. But interface design is sometimes a science. And it could actually, you actually have equations, like mathematical equations, that you could use when designing interfaces. And these extend to not just computer interfaces, but also physical interfaces like handles and doors and stuff. Let's look at one such law that's particularly useful when designing a computer interface. It's called the Fitz Law, and this is how it looks. But let me break down and explain to you what each of these variables actually means. So let's say you have a target here of size s, and you have your cursor here. And the distance between your target and cursor is d. So what this law actually tries to predict is it tries to find the, um, the how much time the user would take to move his cursor from this point and through distance d to the target of size s. So you want this distance to be as small as possible in any interface. You, uh, you want this time to be as small as possible when designing any such interface because that means the user can do what he wants to do much more efficiently and faster. So time t here is time and d is the distance and s is the size of the target. You don't really have to worry about a and b but they are experimentally determined values and in this case we'll just say that a is equals 50 and b equals 150 and you really don't have to worry about these because they are experimentally determined values. So let's see an application of this. If you've ever used a Mac and you switched from a Windows computer, as you most likely did, you'd find that it's really different in how its menu bars are structured. Because on a Mac, you have your menu bars right at the top of the screen rather than inside the application window. But on a Windows machine, you have an application, let's say Firefox, and then you have the menu bar here, which has file and edit and a bunch of other um, options. But on the Mac, the same thing is on the top of the screen. And it actually the, the place of this actually doesn't change as you move from applications. Just the, the names of the menu items might change based on the application. But let's see why the Macintosh um, chose to do this approach versus the Windows approach. And this is easily seen from, you, from an application of Fitzla. So let's calculate out the time it takes for a cursor that is, say, 80 millimeters away. And the units don't matter because when you have D over S, the units cancel out. So you can pick any units for the distance and the size of the target. So let's say you have a mouse cursor that's 80 millimeters away. And let's calculate the time it takes on a Mac. It would be 50 plus 150 log 2 and 80. And what exactly is the size of the target here? Because it's right at the edge of the screen, the size of the target is actually huge. Because the user could overrun the screen and he would still be at the same position because you can't go over the screen. So this could be an arbitrarily large number. It could be, let's say, it's 50 millimeters. And then you plus 1. And I've actually computed this, and I found it to be 256 milliseconds. If you do the same thing on the Windows computer, it's 50 plus 150 log 2, the same distance. But in, in the Windows computer, the target of the size is actually, the size of the target is actually defined. It's probably 5 millimeters. And it's defined because it's not at the corner of the screen, and it's in the middle of the screen, so it has a fixed size that you can actually calculate. And what you find is that it's actually about three times higher. So, and all, all of this can be derived from Fitzla, and it really makes a lot of sense, because in this case, the size of the target is really big, and that implies that it's much easier for the user to click that. And this is probably why you enjoy using a Mac more than a Windows computer.